Hey everyone, welcome to another video in the Feral Vlog series where we explore ways that we can return to the wild. My name is Jesse Kuzbeck and I am in North Alabama right now looking at these beautiful mushrooms. And you guys know what these mushrooms are, right? It's turkey tail, it, it has to be turkey tail. They, they look like turkey tail and how can we know, how can we know for sure? How do we know that these are definitely turkey tail and not something else? Well, come with me and we're gonna find out. All right, so right now we're trying to verify if this right here is indeed true turkey tail, Tremides versicolor. And what I'm gonna use to verify is what's called the totally true turkey tail test. It is a fantastic and wonderful form of alliteration that I love and I hope that you will too. You can find it on mushroomexpert.com. I'm gonna link it below. Make sure to check that out. So, starting with number one, we're gonna look at the underside. And the first thing that we're looking for is, does it have pores? Turkey tail has pores. And the pores are gonna be whitish to brownish. They turn brown slightly with age, but not too much. So if we look underneath here, we can see that we do have white to light brown pores. Now, that's number one. The second thing that we're looking for is, are the pores small or are they big? So we have to kind of squint a little bit to see that it does have pores here, but they're very tiny. That is number two. So moving right along. Now we're gonna look on the top side. And number three is the texture of the cap. So is it smooth or is it kind of hairy and velvety? If it's hairy and velvety, then we go along. That's another sign of turkey tail. Now we're looking at the color. So is it just gray to white? If it's only gray to white, it's not turkey tail. But we see here that we definitely have some really vibrant, beautiful colors. Another marker of the species name, Versicolor. It comes in all kinds of different colors. Now, once we've identified that it does have color, we're looking at the coloration zones. Does it have distinct coloration zones? That's number five. And if it does have distinct coloration zones, then we move right along because now we'll probably have turkey tail. The last thing to look at is, is it thin and flexible? It's definitely thin, you can see that right here. Is it flexible? Yes, it's definitely flexible. It's slightly rigid right now because it's a bit dry, it's an older specimen, but it definitely has some flexibility to it. It is not hard and rigid. If it was hard and rigid, it would not be turkey tail. So, number one, we're looking for whitish to brownish pores. Number two, we want those pores to be small. Number three, we're looking for a velvety texture on the cap. Number four, we're looking for some color. Number five, we're looking for distinct coloration zones. And finally, number six, we're looking for it to be thin and flexible. And once you have done that, you know that you have totally true turkey tail. So what are we gonna do now? Well, I think we should harvest some. Let's do that. Now, why would we even be interested in harvesting turkey tail? Well, if you do a quick search on Google Scholar, you will find tons and tons of studies on the medicinal benefits of turkey tail. In fact, turkey tail is the most researched mushroom of any mushroom for medicinal uses. So that's really cool. And I'm always looking out for this and I'm always harvesting some when I can find it. Again, right now it's November in North Alabama and this is a really, really good time to find it. One quick caveat, I'm harvesting right now with a plastic bag and I wouldn't normally be doing this, but when I have all my camera gear with me, it's kind of hard to also carry a nice foraging basket that I, that I would usually carry with me. So uh, I'm definitely not storing these in a plastic bag long term, but with polypores like this, like turkey tail, it's not really a big deal to put them in a plastic bag for right now. And it helps me to reuse a plastic bag instead of throwing it away. That's definitely something that I want to do. So without any further ado, let's start harvesting some of this stuff. Now remember, when you're harvesting mushrooms, it is like picking the apple off of an apple tree. It is not like ripping a plant out of the ground. So the turkey tail, the mycelium is actually in this log and by picking the fruiting body that we see here, I'm not actually harming the mycelium at all. In fact, in some cases, 
picking the mushroom actually stimulates growth in the mycelium. So you as a mushroom hunter going out there and foraging for mushrooms can benefit the mushrooms themselves while you're foraging for them. There's some of the harvest. So this is enough for me for now. I, I, have, I have plenty at home, so I'm not gonna take too much, but this is definitely enough for me. And now we're gonna go off into the woods and see what else that we can find out here. So for the most part, November, this time of the year in North Alabama, what I'm really looking for are, are mushrooms when I'm out in the woods. But every once in a while, you do find some really cool flowers as well. And here's one that I couldn't identify for the longest time because it took so long to flower and I saw it in early spring. It's right here. And the name of it is white snake root. I'll make sure to put it in the video so that you can see it, but white snake root. And it is not edible. In fact, it does have some toxicity issues. Apparently, this plant is responsible for something called, I believe it's called milk poisoning. If I got that wrong, then I'll make sure to correct it in the video. But cows would eat this and then their milk would be toxic. And this allegedly is how Abraham Lincoln's mother died, was from milk poisoning of white snake root. So I think it's a really cool plant to find and the flowers are beautiful. They're really, really beautiful. So white snake root, look out for it. Now, when I first started foraging, which was in the springtime, I remember I would go to the woods here and I would be so stressed out about I wanted to find everything. I wanted to know what everything was. And first off, let me just help you out by saying that you will never ever know what everything is and that's okay. There's nothing to worry about. But I, I wanted to learn as much as I possibly could in as fast of a time as I could and I didn't want to miss anything. So I developed this strategy that really helped me out and uh, I would walk this route over and over again. I, I always walked this particular route in the woods and what I would do is, on the way in, I would be looking very closely in front of me, around, around where my feet were. And then, on the way out, I would look further away from me. So, that way I was making sure that I wasn't missing anything. So, if there was something close by, I would find it. Or if there was something further away that I wouldn't have seen if I was just looking down at my feet, then I would see that too. So, I think it's a really good strategy and I would encourage you guys to try it too. Okay. So my journey into foraging went in this order. First, I learned plants, and I learned a bunch of plants. And then after that, I started to learn about mushrooms. And after mushrooms in the winter time, uh, here I wasn't finding very much. So the only thing that I had left to turn to was trees. So I started learning about trees in the winter time, which means I had to learn about bark identification, which is a little bit difficult. It's a little bit more nuanced than plant identification, but it's really rewarding and it's a lot of fun. And this tree right here is a really fantastic one to start out with for tree identification because as you can see, it's really, really distinctive. And this tree is called shagbark hickory. It happens to drop hickory nuts that are very, very good. And I'll talk more in another video about how I use hickory nuts because they're kind of hard to get out of the shell. But this right here is shagbark hickory. Definitely start to look out for it and start to train your eyes to look at different types of tree barks and what tree that they might be. It's a whole lot of fun. Now, of course, I'm gonna be a little bit careful of touching this tree because you can see some of these hairy vines that are going up, which is poison ivy, and I definitely don't want any poison ivy right now. Shagbark hickory, look out for it. When you're out foraging, you always have to be looking for both the big and the small. So let's take a look at this tiny mushroom that I just found. So here it is, it's right, right there. You can see how tiny it is in relation to my finger. And this isn't one that I would eat just because it's so insubstantial, but there are edible mushrooms that are in the same group as this one. So let's cut it open to see if we have what I think we do. What I'm looking for is a uh, perfectly white center inside. So let's see if we have that. Cut it. Yeah, look at that, a beautiful, it's perfectly white. There's no discoloration in there. So this mushroom is a puffball mushroom. And a lot of puffball mushrooms are edible. This one probably is, I need to do some more research, but it's so small and insubstantial that it would be kind of difficult to cook with it anyway. So I'm looking for the giant puffballs. Those are the ones that are really good and render you a lot of edible material. So this is just a really cool one to find. 
So I've entered a part of the woods now that's filled with these maple trees. And right now at this time of the year, the maple trees are beautiful. They're this gorgeous yellow green color and it's, it's really wonderful. And sometimes when I'm out foraging, I forget that there's all this out here too. It's not just about, you know, wild food and medicine, that there's so much beauty to enjoy and take in. And that's one of the reasons why I love foraging so much and why I encourage you to start foraging as well, because it always brings you outside to places like this to enjoy and to be a part of. I think it's really, really awesome. All right, there's a couple things right in this spot that I wanna talk about really quick. So number one is we found this mushroom right here. And at first glance, you might think, oh my gosh, could this be turkey tail? But there are two main things that let us know that this one is not. So the first one is if you look at the color, it's not very colorful. It's very dull brown all over. It does have distinct coloration zones, but it's very dull brown. We don't see any vibrant colors at all. We turn on the underside, we see that it's got dark brown tooth. It's kind of like a tooth polypore. So this one right here is not turkey tail. That's okay though, it was still a really pretty mushroom. Now the other thing that I wanna show you is a species of passion flower. So everyone knows Passiflora incarnata, that's, that's one of the really beautiful purple flower that to me looks like it's from another planet. But there's another one that you can find in North Alabama and it's called Passiflora lutea. It's a yellow passion flower. It's much, much smaller, like this big compared to this big. And here are some leaves. Right here you can see these curlies that I always look out for, oops, right there. So Passiflora lutea, that's another passion flower that you can be looking for out in North Alabama and it's a really, really cool plant to find. So this tree right here is one of my oyster mushroom trees and unfortunately it doesn't have any oysters on it right now. So no luck today, but we'll come by another time to see if we are more lucky and that's not the worst thing in the world, that just means that we have to go out and be in the woods again, which is a really, really wonderful thing. So, I hope that you liked this video, I hope that you learned something. If you did like it and you wanna see more, be sure to subscribe so that you'll be notified about future videos. If you really liked it, then maybe consider hitting that like button, it helps me out quite a lot. Share it with a friend that you want to teach about wild food and medicine. And, as always, be feral and keep forging. I'll see you guys in the next one.